good day, everyone, and welcome to this presentation of the tool uh, paper, etc. Beyond Event Trigger Control, developed at my team. I'm Manuel Mazo. Uh, I'm from the Delft University of Technology, and this is work with Janis Dellen Paltarakis, Gabriel Glaser, and Ivo van Stralen. I'll start with a brief introduction to event trigger control, motivating why we care about modeling the timing of events in such systems and how we can do such modeling. And finally, I'll show you how these models can be useful for scheduling and for uh, synthesis and analysis of quantitative uh, specifications. First, what's event trigger control? Event trigger control is essentially a mechanism to implement feedback in control systems in which instead of uh, uh, running the closing this switch to send measurements periodically. This is done based on some events. And uh, the way in which this is done is typically by representing the switch, the effect of sample, sample on hold by an error signal and designing some so-called triggering conditions that, that depend on this uh, error signal and the actual state of the system, both available to the sensors so that whenever these conditions uh, hold, then the performance of the control loop can be uh, guaranteed to some specified uh, uh, performance. Now, this typically looks like what you see on the right, where the triggering condition, whenever it hits, uh, it's about to be violated, a new measurement is sent. Therefore, the uh, error is reset to zero and the condition goes back to be uh, satisfied. And the time between these events dictates what are exactly the times between uh, transmissions on this system. And as you can see, this moves away from being a periodic sampling in which these uh, bars should have all the same height to something which uh, changes over time and it could be much more erratic than the, the example shown in the slide. Now, at this point, one can make a, distinct, uh, a distinction between continuous inventory or control in which uh, the sensor is checking continuously that triggering condition. And therefore, <clears throat> sampling times can happen any in, in the real line at any point. While periodic event trigger control, what it does is assume that sensor takes measurements periodically and only transmits them when a condition can be violated. And therefore, it just takes values, uh, countable possible values in the sample times. I will denote the intersample time generated from a given state x by a periodic uh, event trigger condition by tau of x. And the next sample uh, after uh, such intersample time starting from that point x will be denoted by psi sub x tau of x. Now, in uh, the literature, it, the most commonly cited benefits of event trigger control is that they can. Uh, it can help reduce bandwidth usage and reduce wireless energy usage in the case of wireless communications. Now, in practice, to reap such benefits of event trigger control, the, the relaxation of how often it, it transmits comes at the cost of not knowing when uh, are the transmission times beforehand. And that hinders uh, us from being able to, to reap the benefits of, uh, of event trigger control, as we need to know those in order to uh, scheduled transmissions to prevent collisions in the channel or to limit uh, the amount of time that our radios are switched on listening for possible transmissions. Now, besides this problem of qualitative uh, uh, scheduling multiple event trigger control systems, we may be interested on also quantitative questions like which event trigger control implementation gives a uh, lower resource utilization, um, what is the worst case for such a resource utilization, or how can we optimize um, and the resource utilization by modifying the event trigger condition. Now we'll take a separation of concerns approach in which we separate the design of a controller and the, separate, uh, and, and the design of scheduling uh, solutions. And in order to do that, what we require is some form of interface between the event trigger controllers and the type of models required to solve uh, these problems uh, delineated, delineated before. And that's what we'll call traffic abstractions. So uh, the objective of Xetra is to provide an automa automated method to construct traffic abstractions, synthesize schedules for multiple event trigger controllers, compute performance metrics, and even op optimize for these performance metrics, possibly modifying the event trigger mechanism. The toolbox is available in the link below with all the documentation, and it takes the form of a library for Python. We will use the notion of generalized transition system to describe the models that we're constructing. This is simply a sextuple indicating where the set of states and initial states, the set of inputs, 
uh, a transition relation capturing the dynamics of the system, set of outputs, and an output map mapping states into outputs. In particular, in the case that, the, that concerns us, what we will be interested in constructing is a model that can let us know what are all possible sequences of intersample intervals generated by an event rear controller. And that will be essentially a saying that from a given state X, we want to know, we want to have in our transition relation, all the X primes, so the transitions from X to X prime, where X prime is the next sample generated starting when one starts from X and waits for the associated sampling time interval tau of X. And we'll use this tau of X, the inter event times, uh, as the output of a given state X. Now, this model is still infinite, and what we want to do is construct finite abstractions that we can manipulate computationally. Now, this is done in etc. by constructing so-called Poisson systems. The idea is to partition the state space, place transitions between um, uh, regions of the state space in which in the initiating region, there's a, a point that after it's associated event through sampling, sampling time, it, it is mapped to a point in the landing region X prime. Now, more interestingly, the outputs of associated to each of the region will be in this case now, not a single uh, value of time, but it will be a time interval uh, capturing all the possible time uh, inter-event times that one can see for points inside a given region. Now, in the case of periodic event real control, as we indicated earlier on, these will be finite sets. And in particular, we'll try to make those be singletons. Now, at this point, it's important to observe that the model that I just described is essentially semantically equivalent to a time automaton. And this will come in handy when we uh, develop our tool as we can rely on tools like UPAL to solve some of our problems. Besides that, in the case of uh, periodic event real control, models simplify to finite labeled automata as we don't need any more continuous clocks. <clears throat> the general idea is then to just partition state space compute uh, which inter-event times are associated to points in a given region and perform reachability analysis to construct the, um, the transition um, map of our, um, of our abstraction. Now, at this point, two alternatives appear. The first one is to start partitioning space and computing the time intervals, and that's how we initially started our work. But in et cetera, we implement a somewhat smarter approach in which we partition times uh, and then compute the corresponding space partitioning to those time intervals or exact times in the case of periodic event rule control. This, these sets is what we will call isochronous sets. In the case of uh, nonlinear systems, we need to perform additional subdivision to facilitate the reachability analysis. While in the case of uh, linear periodic event rule controllers, we can compute abstractions which uh, uh, has as output only one intersample time associated or even refine these ones by constructing abstractions that have uh, associated to each region a sequence of future even inter-event uh, times. Now, this is done very simply in etc. given a periodic event real control system of the form of uh, present in the slide with some matrix A, B, controller K, and some quadratic free condition. One simply needs to specify in a Python script the system and uh, parameters uh, for the triggering condition. Then automatically one can construct a model for the periodic event rear control system and call a method to abstract the model into a finite abstraction. Similarly, in the case of nonlinear systems, this can be done in essentially the same way, but now we need to specify the dynamics and the triggering condition symbolically using the modus simpy. And, uh, and once this is done, one can simply call the, the method implemented in etc. to construct these abstractions. And moreover, one can visualize these abstractions in the form of plots showing us what are the inter-event times uh, intervals associated to each of the regions of the abstraction and uh, what is the, um, uh, the map of, uh, of transitions between regions uh, for this abstraction as visualized in the picture on the right. Now, once we have these abstractions available, we can simply enrich in these abstractions with some actions uh, useful for scheduling, for instance, forcing early triggering, uh, compose these abstractions of multiple control loops with a model 
of a network where a bad state is reached when Q control loops try to access the channel within a certain time interval. And then we can simply use UPAL to solve a safety problem, which will lead to a scheduling strategy preventing uh, collisions in this, in this overall system. This is done with a very few lines of, of coding, et cetera, and which the last one actually is the one calling UPAL and retrieving the resulting strategy. In the case of periodic event trigger control, as indicated earlier, this is a simpler procedure as uh, the objects that capture the, the traffic models of the systems are simply non-deterministic finite automata, in which case we can do absolutely everything uh, natively and et cetera, and we can solve the synthesis problems there. And this is done again with just very few lines of code. And we can simulate the resulting uh, system, which will result in some trajectories of the system, uh, two systems in this case being stabilized. And we can see here how before uh, using uh, earlier uh, triggering scheduling, we could have a couple of uh, collisions within one point two, the first 1.2 seconds, which are re re removed in the scheduling strategy by forcing some earlier triggering. Finally, um, we are also interested on quantifying how good an event trigger control system. And for instance, there's other metrics that one can, can, could use and that we uh, have been implementing also in et cetera. But one simple one will be, for instance, measuring what's the smallest average in sample time of a given event trigger control system. And if we allow now to have earlier triggering as scheduling actions, one may observe that actually event trigger controllers are simply greedy uh, approaches towards trying to optimize the size. And therefore, there will be suboptimal in general. As a matter of fact, by solving mean payoff games, one can design so-called state-dependent sampling strategies in which sometimes by uh, transmitting slightly earlier than the given deadline fixed by the periodic event trigger control time, one can maintain the system in a lower utilization mode than if one will follow the greedy approach provided by periodic event trigger control. These can be done again in etc., uh, where we provide methods to compute the size of a given system, optimize the size of the, of the system, and then check by composing the strategy with a model that was obtained before, check the new size. And in this example, for instance, one can we'll go to even double the original size provided by periodic event trigger control. Finally, some outlook on the future. We are working towards uh, incorporating uh, penalties and transmissions and, um, and adding cost at uh, the locations of our time automata abstractions so that we can establish trade-offs between convergence and communication and then use again some of the flavors of UPAL to solve price time games. We have been constructing uh, stochastic uh, abstractions of stochastic event trigger control systems in the form of interval Markov chains and computer metrics of these systems. Uh, we've been exploring the, uh, the structure of the abstractions to scale up the, the synthesis of schedulers and even using stochastic learning synthesis to again scale up some of these procedures. And finally, while we can uh, simulate already um, some things within uh, our tool, we would like to interconnect with Omnet++ to provide more realistic network simulation of these scheduling systems. With this, we hope to have uh, freed, at least partly, uh, the elephant that was earlier in the room. And uh, at this point, I would just like to thank you for your attention, thank the European Research Council for all the funding, and a few of other, other team members that helped in the, and contributed in this, the construction of the tool, etc.